Um, well, despite having the same name, pro-lymphocytic leukemia, the B and T cell subtypes are substantially different. So to take them alphabetically, the BPLL first um, is a disease which is distinct from but quite similar in clinical behavior to chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And the treatments that we currently use for BPLL are quite similar to the treatments we would use for CLL. So, because it's such a rare disease, there's been very little published data on chemotherapy or immunotherapy regimens. Um, so a, a lot of the uh, treatments are derived from the experience in the more common diseases such as CLL. So for example, um, combination chemoimmunotherapy with drugs uh, like purinalogs, fludarabine or bendamustine in combination with rituximab, sometimes with the addition of other agents such as cyclophosphamide or an anthracycline, are the typical regimens, chemoimmunotherapy regimens that have been used. Um, in keeping with CLL, monotherapy with rituximab is not so effective, although uh, there are remissions, these are not very durable, so the better remissions are seen when the antibody rituximab is combined with other therapeutic agents such as FC or B, uh, bendamustine, uh, and those are the, the common treatments that are now used and induce high remission rates with relatively durable remissions. Um, the other issue with BPLL is that um, a cytogenetic fault uh, in the TP53 gene, either deletion or mutation of that gene is, is very common, much commoner than is seen in the other B-cell leukemias. So about 50% of the patients will have a fault in this gene, which means they don't usually have very good responses to combinations um, such as I've mentioned. So in that context, we might, might select an alternative antibody um, called alemtuzumab. Um, and I think that in the future, hopefully, we will be able to um, develop experience of some of the newer agents, the B-cell receptor antagonists, for example, in this um, very rare um, subset of, of B-cell leukemia.